The Women's Bureau promotes the welfare of women workers. It investigates and reports on all conditions and problems related to women's employment. In the dress industry, for example, the Bureau finds old problems and new ways of meeting them. Reform was urged by progressive citizens and vigorously advocated by the President of the United States 30 years ago. Now federal and state governments cooperate. But law is not the only weapon. Years ago, workers in the dress industry, women as well as men, organized and worked together to better their labor conditions. Years passed. What progress was made was wiped out by the Depression, with sweatshop evils spreading like mushrooms. Then all forces rallied against them. Conferences and real collective bargaining were encouraged as a more satisfactory means than strikes to settle difficulties and to establish better labor standards. In the dress industry, a seven-hour day with Saturday and Sunday off and fair wages were the result. Here is an example of collective bargaining. This shows you how the industry settles the labor prices, that is, the wages paid the workers making dresses. Since wages are based on the piecework system, rates for each new style have to be agreed upon by representatives of the employer, his employees, and the union. Thus, the minimum standards provided in the union contract with the employers' associations are safeguarded. Of course, the more efficient among the workers are able to earn more than the minimum, and some considerably more, because of their greater skill. After peace rates are settled, an official record is copied and made available to all concerned. With some 200,000 dress styles designed each year, occasional disputes are bound to arise, especially as no two styles are alike, each requiring special handling in the making. Sometimes the employees' representatives insist that the proposed rates are too low to enable the peace workers to earn a fair wage. Or the employer's representative refuses to consider higher rates on the basis that the manufacturer will not find it profitable to produce a particular dress. If two sides are unable to reach an agreement, and obviously in this case they cannot, then the impartial deputy is called in to settle the matter. In the dress industry today, arbitration is the way out of many difficulties. Thus, misunderstandings and grievances are adjusted. Strikes and lockouts are prevented. Industrial waste is avoided. The impartial deputy who knows the dress industry from A to Z studies the garment carefully, calculates the amount of time and skill necessary for the various operations decides what will be fair rates of pay from the viewpoint of both the manufacturer and the workers. His opinion is generally accepted as final. Thus, industrial peace is preserved in this industry centered in the New York metropolitan area where 110,000 workers turn out most of the dresses worn by the American woman today. Let us visit the factory where the dresses are made. The big room hums. The skillful operators who sew up the whole dress work under high tension. Nimble fingers carefully guide the material, and the high-powered machine sews the seams, making 1,800 stitches a minute. After the dresses are entirely finished, the pressers give them the final once-over. Hand pressing takes a lot of knowing how and working fast. Now ready for the wholesale trade, the dresses are of such varied style and wide price range as to meet the needs of all tastes and pocketbooks. For making these dresses, women are well paid. Here are some typical pay envelopes during the busy season, which is necessary to meet Dame Fashion's decrees. At last, Dame Fashion is concerned with promoting the workers' welfare along with new styles in dresses and hats. Look, for example, at this label sponsored by the millinery industry. The dress industry should have a similar label to guide women shoppers. 
But Dame Fashion's whims and wiles still cause serious problems. For example, slack seasons when factories have little or no work. Think of the tragedy of idle hands. So skillful, anxious for work, but finding none. Solution of this and other problems in the dress industry calls for the cooperation of all concerned. Manufacturers, workers, retailers, and consumers must help to eliminate these evils and to abolish sweatshop conditions prevailing in some of the other branches of the clothing industry. Cooperation is the best route to industrial and labor progress.